Hello everyone, Mark Anson Audio here. So about six, seven months ago, I made a video documenting the fact that I was changing from Pro Tools to Reaper after using Pro Tools for nearly a decade. So now enough time has passed that I can sort of give my analysis on my switch to Reaper and how successful it's been and my recommendations. So I'm going to start off by giving a, a score out of 10 to Reaper and then work backwards in that, if that makes sense. So I'm going to give Reaper an 8 out of 10, which is very good. I'd probably give Pro Tools about a 3 out of 10 for reference. Um, uh, so I'm going to explain some of those reasons. So we're going to start with the positives right off the bat. Right, the first thing is Reaper is incredibly quick in almost every respect. Uh, it opens really quickly, like it can open in about five seconds. I've got it installed on in a solid state hard drive. It opens in about five seconds. You can download and install it in about a minute and a half. It's a very, very small file, very well coded, very tightly coded and not padded with, with bump. It's not four or five gigabytes like Pro Tools is. Um, if there's any updates of which there are regular updates for, for the software, uh, you can download them and be running again in about a minute and a half, which is phenomenal. Uh, and it's also very cheap. Um, they have an unlimited free trial, sort of. Well, you're supposed to pay for it after, I think it's 30 or 60 days, but the trial will continue. It doesn't ever stop, and that trial is is not restricted in any way, uh, which is brilliant. Because I used it for quite a while before, before I decided to take the plunge. But even when I did, they have uh, different pricing schemes. They have a, like a, a small business pricing scheme, which I bought, which was very cheap. It was something like $60, which is ridiculous price for, for what it is. Uh, and then they have like a larger, uh, if you run a professional studio or professional audio production or whatever, uh, there is a, like a higher price bracket for that. Uh, but but it's all, all the same version. There's no like feature restrictions or anything. Uh, it's There's, there's no, no DRM or anything like that. This is how you do digital distribution correctly in the modern age. You, you say, here's a software. We're not going to limit it anyway. Um, and for the love of God, please pay for it, <laughs> basically. And uh, you have to applaud the, the courage to do that in a world where piracy is a problem, to just say, hey, let's not spend all our budget trying to restrict this product and using freaking eye locks and all this rubbish. Uh, it's just, hey, just pay for it, run it, and you're good to go. Excellent stuff. Okay, right, next on my list, it, it's very, very CPU efficient. So if anyone has used Pro Tools for a long time, uh, they will be sick to damn death of the those DA E uh, errors, like the digital audio engine errors that are dime a dozen when like the thing just runs into problems where there's too many plugins, there's uh, your buffer size is, is kind of too big or too small. Pro Tools likes to complain a lot. It is a very whiny bit of software for the lack of a better term. Uh, Reaper is a million times better. I think I've had Reaper uh, crash on me once in the past seven months um, and I've had Pro Tools crash on me nearly a daily basis. And if it wasn't crashing, it was stopping playback and demanding I change buffer size. Uh, I've only had to change the buffer size once in Reaper, <laughs> and that's a good sign. Um, I, I was doing a mix where I had lots and lots of plugins, lots of virtual instruments, and then it was starting to kind of grind to a halt. And I was like, what has gone wrong? And I'd completely forgotten about the concept of changing buffer sizes because Reaper just handles everything so well that you don't have to think about buffer size. Imagine that. Imagine a world where you think about buffer size less. It is a good world to live in. You should live in that world. Okay. Another plus, some of the built-in effects uh, are very powerful. Uh, so the free effects that come with it, uh, there's an EQ, which is great. And it's called Rhea, Rhea, EQ, Rhea EQ, or whatever, however you pronounce it. The EQ is brilliant. It's got like a visual display, like a spectrum analyzer in it as well. Uh, it's, it's very powerful, especially if you're new, a very powerful EQ. Uh, it's also got a lot, uh, some really bizarre, quite crazy effects. Uh, it's got stuff like uh, uh, vocoders that you can root up in very strange ways. It has other things where you can assign MIDI notes to trigger other sort of stuff. Uh, very complex stuff that is not necessarily immediately obvious how to use it, but uh, is very powerful once you figure out what you can do with it. And they're designed to be creative tools for the most, for the most part very advanced user level, but there's a lot of power there in them and it's great to see them included. Uh, something that Pro Tools I didn't necessarily like is the had a sort of user-friendly vibe to it where a lot of the included effects were quite, the, the, the more basic, simple effects. They were, they were good, but they were basic and simple because they wanted the user to have an easy experience. Uh, the user experience in Reaper is not as easy as Pro Tools, which I'll come to in more depth later, uh, but as such, you also get 
the option to use these more crazy advanced uh, effects that can do all sorts of weird stuff and very specific and niche things with and that's great to see them included. Uh, I want to give a special shout out to the pitch shifter which is included uh, with Reaper which is fantastic. Um, I do a lot of pitch shifting because I do sound effect design and pitch shifting and sampling is a huge part of that. Uh, the the built-in pitch shifter is fantastic and even simple stuff like being able to double click on a region of audio and change the pitch in there uh, just really quickly just oh yeah minus 12 up an octave or down an octave or, or whatever uh, it's very powerful um, it, it, it's really helped my workflow a, a lot and I've enjoyed using it a lot uh, another thing all effects in Reaper come with the mix control this is brilliant I absolutely love mix controls so if you don't know what that means a mix control is when you can balance the the wet and dry signal together. So the wet signal signal being the affected version and the dry being the original unprocessed version. Uh, so everything in Reaper comes with a, a wet dry mix control so you can blend them. Uh, that's just brilliant if you're doing compression then all you need to do is hit the, the wet dry control and you've got parallel compression on the go. Good stuff for if you've got some distortion but it's cool but it's maybe a wee bit too much you can just pull back on the wet dry mix so you get a little bit of your original signal in there as well. Very, very powerful, a very simple thing, uh, but brilliant for workflow, absolutely love it. Uh, next on the list, very customizable. Um, so Reaper is customizable in a lot of ways. So the most obvious one is the theming of it all. So the default Reaper theme is a touch on the dull side, um, but it's because you can customize it and you can go onto the Reaper website and download uh, templates that other people have made that customize things from the the size of the faders to the track colors to, to the where the buttons are positioned what icons are used for the buttons everything um, if you want there is themes out there that people have made that replicate the look and feel of say Pro Tools or Cubase or Logic or whatnot so if you're moving from one doll to this one you can download one of those themes and you can use that as a sort of a starting off point to help you feel more familiar right off the bat. And what's really cool is you can download the skins, these themes, on your desktop, and literally just drag and drop them into Reaper, like into an open session, and it will change the, the theme immediately. Uh, that's, just, that's really cool and a great way to sort of try them out and see which ones uh, work for you. Uh, in addition to that, uh, in Reaper there is a thing called the actions list which is a, a menu that has every single action that Reaper can perform. So a basic action could be like start, stop, rewind, fast forward, blah, blah, blah. Uh, but all up to the incredibly complicated ones, like uh, moving a, a time selection, like quarter of a second to the, the left or whatever. Uh, and basically every single possible thing you can do in one general action list. And what's cool about this is you can make custom action macros, essentially. Uh, so you can basically do some, I don't even want to call it programming because that makes it sound more complicated than it is. Basically, you just choose a, se a sequence of actions, say do this, 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 and this. And then you can say, hey, assign that all to F7 on my keyboard. You press F7, click, and it does all those things. Um, so you can build custom actions to do pretty much anything. And it really takes the busy work out of, uh, uh, if you've got projects where you have to do a lot of repetitive tasks, Again, like in sound effect design, I do have to do a lot of chopping things up. Uh, if I've got, like, say, I've recorded several different sound effects, it chops them all up, it takes away the, the silences in between them, puts fades at the beginning and the end, normalizes them, and renders them out. Uh, and I can do that with a single button press because I've programmed like, uh, something in the actions list. That's crazy, crazy powerful. It's really cool. Uh, a little intimidating at first, but the, the power there is, is phenomenal. Um, okay, uh, next on my list, two of my favorite things that I missed from all these years of using Pro Tools, not including the new one, I, I stopped on Pro Tools 9 for reference. Uh, track freezing and faster than real time bouncing or rendering. So track freezing, you can right click on a track, and tell it to freeze, and basically what it'll do is it'll take all the effects on that, be they virtual instruments or EQs, compressors, whatever it is they are, and it'll render it all out in one uh, WAV file and then it'll mute the, the original. Um, so basically what you end up with is just a single WAV file that is that track. And the, the reason that's important is it can be used to save CPU power, but it keeps a backup of your original track that had all the effects on it that got you to that place in, in the first place. Uh, so track freezing is very powerful. Um, 
especially if you work with a lot of virtual instruments like I do. Uh, so I do it quite a lot if I'm, say, using my BFD drums. Uh, I'll make a whole big drum sequence, uh, but running BFD is quite power intensive, or like processor intensive and RAM intensive. So what I'll do is once I'm happy with the uh, the beat of the whole thing, I'll, I'll basically render out the whole thing, uh, freeze it all out to one uh, one stereo track, and I'll use that for kind of recording too. And then when it comes to mixing, I can then open up all that BFD stuff all again, uh, and it's all there, and then I can mix with it then. Uh, so very cool. Uh, faster than real-time bounce, again, uh, so bouncing is once you've finished your session and you want your stereo file at the end or your surround sound file or your mono file, whatever it is you want. Um, and when I used Pro Tools for all those years, it was a real-time bounce. So if I had a five-minute song, I meant to hit render, and then I went and made a cup of tea. When I was doing podcasting, or I still am doing podcasting, uh, if, a, if a show was two hours long, it meant hitting hit and go and waiting for two hours. Uh, whereas in Reaper, it's faster than real-time. It goes as fast as your CPU can handle it, basically. Uh, so for me, typically a five minute song renders out in about 20 seconds uh, and he, say an, a 90 minute podcast might take 10 minutes, if that, to render out. Uh, that has been the most incredible time save. And one of the things that I really enjoy about it is when I'm working on a song and say I'm about to go out into town or whatever, I can just in 30 seconds or so render out uh, a file that I can then throw on my MP3 player so I can listen to it while I'm walking into town and get an idea of how the song's going, you know, just kind of listen to it while I'm walking. So Fast and Real Time Bounce, two thumbs up, absolutely love it. Uh, the negatives of Reaper, uh, it is probably an unnecessarily complex interface and it's very cluttered. Like it's one of the first things you notice when you, you open Reaper, uh, you go into the menus, like the file menu, options menus and whatnot, and there's just a million things everywhere. Um, you right click on anything, you get 50 options kind of thing. Uh, the whole thing could do with some streamlining. There's a lot of options which I can't help but feel could be hidden away. Uh, and I'm a big usability and user interface guy. Um, I like things that are very elegantly designed. There's really not much elegant elegance in the design of Reaper's user interface and it takes a wee while to get used to. Uh, and it does, uh, hinder the learning curve or make the, the learning curve longer uh, just because there's so many options that it can be a little overwhelming at times. Uh, in general it is quite difficult to learn. Um, I found that when I was working with Pro Tools I then when I worked with Reason for a while, I still use Reason every now and again and I love it a lot, I found Reason very easy to learn. Uh, I've done a wee bit of work on Cubase and a bit of work with Logic and I found those quite easy to jump into. Uh, Reaper took me a wee bit longer uh, I recommend a YouTube channel called The Reaper Blog. Uh, a guy does um, Reaper tutorials and whatnot. And specifically, he had one video where his friend was was moving to Reaper and was basically asking questions and he would be uh, explaining how to do the things that the guy wanted to do, how you would do them in Reaper. Uh, that helped me a lot. Um, so saying it's tricky to learn, having been using audio software for 10 years, uh, is not a great thing uh, because it should be quite easy for me to learn because I've had so much experience with audio software. So if this is your first ever DAW, it might be quite overwhelming. You might need to really hit the tutorials and hit the, uh, the instruction manual pretty hard before you can really figure out what you're doing. Uh, that said, it is very powerful once you get used to it um, and you can do a lot of things that you just can't do in Pro Tools or if you could do them were very convoluted to do in Pro Tools, but you can do them in a very sensible and elegant way uh, in uh, in Reaper. So it's worth learning, it definitely is worth learning. Uh, and there's a lot of tricks to the trade that can make your workflow just incredibly quick. Uh, the last, last negative is a real bugbear for me, is you cannot mix uh, pre-fade. Um, so what that means is in, uh, is in Reaper, say I've got my band or guitar, uh, guitar track or whatnot, if I pull down the fader on the guitar track, uh, my metering, so the actual visual indication and whatnot, will also disappear. Likewise, if I push that fader up, uh, the, the metering will jump and it will eventually start clipping. Um, pre, yeah, sorry, pre-fade metering uh, is basically when you, you can adjust the, the fader and your, your visual metering will always stay the same. Um, so this is more just like a, a personal preference for me. That's the way I learned to mix. I learned to mix pre-fade and getting into the mindset of working post-fade 
uh, post fade mixing is quite confusing. Uh, and apparently people have been asking for this in Reaper for about five, six years or something if you Google it, uh, and it's never surfaced. So there's possibly something about the the internals of how Reaper operates that would stop it ever working, uh, working like that the way I wish it would. Um, but hey ho, you know, nothing's perfect. You can't have everything that you want. Uh, so in general, I absolutely love Reaper. It's been an, uh, probably the most creative six months I've had as a musician working with Reaper just because I don't feel like I'm battling the technology as much. Uh, with Pro Tools, I was constantly having to I'd have a great idea, I'd play like a synth part, and I'd go grab my guitar and plug it in, and then it'd be like, oh, you need to change the buffer size. And then suddenly there'd be a bit more latency and then a record, and then everything's a wee bit out of sync, so then suddenly I have to manually adjust everything back in time again. Uh, with Reaper, it's so CPU efficient and so RAM efficient that I, I don't really think about the technology nearly as much, and that's that's great. Um, I say it's definitely a, a serious bar to, a barrier to entry to, to Reaper, uh, but it is, it's really brilliant once you get past it, and I have absolutely no regrets beyond I wish I'd done it sooner, I suppose. Uh, making the switch to Reaper. Uh, anyway, so I hope you enjoyed this. I say it was about six, seven months ago I made the original part one of this this video. Um, but Reaper is brilliant. If you haven't given it a shot, you have absolutely nothing to lose. As I say, it takes two seconds to download and you've got a free trial um, that is technically unlimited. So you can give it a real a real go before you commit to, to, to buy it or not buy it. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. My name has been Mark Anson Audio. Please like, rate, comment, subscribe, and all that jazz. Adios.